All right, guys, the Christmas and holiday festivities continue. That's right, we are checking out the distilleries, Winter Village, formerly known as the Toronto Christmas Market. I don't know why they changed that, but I think it was last year they started calling it this Winter Village. Anyway, we are gonna be checking that out today. This event runs from November 17th to December 31st. Now, this is a free event to attend, but that said, if you attend after four o'clock on the Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, you do have to pay $11 plus HST. Kids are still free. You also do need to purchase your tickets in advance online. You cannot purchase them when you are there. You might remember me going to this event last year as well, where I sort of documented our day there and what we got up to. So we'll be doing kind of a similar vibe, show you what new things there are there, show you what else there is to experience, get some food, get some drinks. So let's go get day drunk on some mulled wine. Finally made it in. The ticket process is really, really bad. So we tried so many times, it kept crashing and everything. It was a really, really bad system. Anyway, um, it actually ended up charging for uh, one of our cards, but it probably shouldn't have charged. So we paid for like four tickets, sorry, eight tickets, but we should only have four. So yeah, a bit of a shit show, but we're working on it anyway. So the ticket fiasco I think was sorted out, but all in all, there was a lot of people who were struggling to get in. So buy your ticket in advance or show up before four o'clock because that was our plan, but you know things didn't really work out that way. So show up before four o'clock or buy your tickets in advance because it's a disaster. So many people were struggling to get in. They need to sort that out big time. We got our first, first of many mulled wines for tonight. This was about $10, so not too bad. They had a bunch of hot drinks and everything, so I'm sure there'll be many, uh, many more to come. Okay guys, we just had a very disappointing dinner at Bill Street. Everything came out really cold for some reason, it was terrible, but they did end up comping the meal and everything. It was very disappointing, because it was usually pretty good. We had to wait like 45 minutes to get in there. Anyway, we're drinking hot chocolate right now that has tequila in it. So we want to test out the hot chocolate with tequila in it and see what everybody thinks. Let's get right in there. Cheers, cheers, cheers. It's good. I don't taste the tequila that works. at all, but it's good. It's very, very good. Oh my god. That doesn't work. So this one's called Chocolate Chocolate Azteca. So yeah, give it a try. Oh my god, it's cold. of this Ontario Spring Water Sake Company, we have hot apple cider sake. Sake it to me. So that is a wrap on, I was gonna call it the Toronto Christmas Market. Sorry, the Distillery Winter Village. Um, let's talk about that for a second because it kind of threw me off a little bit. So for as long as I can remember, it's been called the Toronto Christmas Market. And I mean, I even hear people on the news when they're referring to it, they still call it the Christmas Market. 
we changed it to Winter Village. And I first noticed the change actually last year. Um, and I just assumed this was because of the pandemic and everything, because the year before they weren't actually running the, the Christmas market. Um, 2019, I think was the last official year. 2020, they didn't do it. 2021, they brought it back, but they called it the Winter Village. Now I assumed that this was because it was sort of like a scaled down version of the typical Toronto Christmas market. That's how I sort of imagined it because of this name change. I figured once things started to get back to normal, we'd go back to referring to it as a Christmas market because I mean, that's what it is, it's a Christmas market. Now this <coughs> channel, I don't wanna be political or talk about religion or talk about anything like that. This is supposed to be a lighthearted, fun channel, basically showing you things to do and, and giving you tips and whatnot. Um, it sort of feels like it's in the same kind of argument as you know when we started calling it a holiday tree. Now I'm all for inclusion. I'm all for making sure everybody, you know, can be included and involved in different things, but I don't know, when we start changing the name to winter or holiday instead of Christmas, I don't know, it, it just feels weird to me. Like I said, I've been going to the Christmas market for many, many years. You see people from all walks of life there. I can't say I've ever seen or heard of anybody feeling excluded or not wanting to be a part of it because it was called the Christmas market um, if they didn't celebrate Christmas. I don't know. I, again, I don't want to open up that can of worms because I'm sure, I know there's people who feel really strongly and passionate about, you know, when we start to take the, the Christmas out of Christmas sort of thing. Um, I'm not one of those people. As I said, I'm all for inclusion, but I just find it funny when we start changing names of things. And like I said, you know, it's, it's a Christmas market and calling it a winter village. I don't think it makes it any less Christmassy when you've got a giant Christmas tree in the middle or maybe they call it a holiday tree now, who knows. Anyway, let's get past that though. I don't really have too much more to cover because I do try and give you a little bit of information while I'm actually at the event. So I don't have too, too much more to mention. Um, we made a couple of working mistakes. So first of all, our plan was to be there during the day. I will blame my friends for being extremely, extremely late. So they got to my place, you know, you know, multiple hours late. So unfortunately we didn't get to be there before four o'clock. So we also had an issue with Uber drivers. What's happening with Uber right now? I don't know if anybody else is experiencing this too. I remember Uber used to be the best. They would give you like bottles of water. There'd be gum, there'd be this, there'd be that. They really went above and beyond. Now they're just like, try and sit on the seat that has less puke on it. And they just do not care. I don't know how many drivers I had in the last little while that have canceled on me while I was in the car because they saw where I wanted to go and were like, I don't want to go there. And it's like, well, you accepted the fare. And it's like, well, there's, there's traffic. I live in Toronto. You're driving in Toronto. There's always traffic. Like, what do you want to do? Go move to Saskatchewan or something if you don't want traffic. I mean, come on. Anyway, so yeah, Uber once again let me down this weekend and, you know, canceled while we were in the car. This time though was because there was four of us. Even though it said that there was four people out in the car, the driver didn't want somebody in the front seat, so cancel. Anyway, whatever, made us even more late, so thanks a lot for that one. So as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, after four o'clock on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, you do have to pay. So unfortunately, we did have to pay. And we got there like right after four, so it was sort of already a kick in the you know what. The other issue was they had a lineup um, where they were instructing people, scan your QR code and pay for your ticket and then come in. Problem was, there was about 50 people or so outside who were all having the same problem. They tried to scan the code, they tried to process the, the payment for the tickets and the site was crashing. It kept crashing over and over and over again and, and, and no one could get in. They kept saying, you know, move out the way so we can get in, but no one can get in because the site kept crashing. <laughs> anyway, so uh, my one friend, Melissa, she tried to put her card in, kept crashing saying payment not accepted. So then eventually Cody put his in. Eventually we did get in. Now Melissa checked and sure enough, she'd been charged as well. So we had been charged twice to go to this event. Anyway, we had to find somebody who worked there. They took us into an office, took our information down, this, that, and the other. So I don't even know if it got resolved or not yet because at that point I had just completely checked out. So hopefully it's fixed by now. I don't know. Now we were there on the opening weekend. We were there, it opened on I think the Thursday. We were there on the Saturday. It was busy. So if you are trying to avoid the crowds, just know that it is it is busy. So maybe try going during the week. Maybe it's less busy those days. Um, yeah, very, very busy. Lots of people, lots of crowds, lots of confusion. You know, you're trying to walk through and there's just constantly people in your way and everything and just stopping. And, you know, there's people taking your pictures, you're dodging everyone taking their pictures. You know, you're trying to be respectful. Everyone's, you know, yeah. Anyway, very busy. But still, I love the Christmas market or 
winter village as we're uh, gonna try to remember to refer to it as. I do think that they do need a, a way to sort of figure out this ticket thing. Like even if they just let you, you know, even if it's cashless, for example, fine, whatever. Let's just swipe, swipe your card, tap your card, something, just scan the QR code, buying your ticket, having to show your ticket. Like it just was, it was sloppy and it just caused a lot of confusion outside for people. It seemed like that was sort of like the theme of the day too, just systems not working. Um, we went to uh, Mill Street Brew Pub, which normally I will say is a great place to have, you know, lunch or dinner when you're when you're at uh, the Stiller District uh, all year round. I, I love the Mill Street Brew Pub. I always get a pretzel from there and, you know, other things like that. They've got some, some good, you know, pub food, bar food type place, but it's really good. Um, we got on their wait list because again, it's always busy. They've actually expanded the place quite nicely, but uh, we were on their wait list. They said about 40 minutes, which yeah, okay, we figured it was probably gonna be the case. Went and got some uh, mulled wine and, and this and that, uh, which I will also get into in a second. Uh, got some mulled wine, went, waited and waited. Got some more mulled wine because we were waiting. We never actually got the text to say our table was ready. So eventually after a while, we came back and said, you know, you said around 45 minutes or so. Um, we never got a text though. And sure enough, our table was ready, but we just never got a notification. So again, I don't know what was going on with the system that day. Was there an internet problem? Was there a problem? Uh, I, I don't know. Something was up there. But anyway, we eventually got in there. We were sat really close to the kitchen. Um, right off the bat, of course, I'm like, I gotta have my pretzel. Got to order my uh, mulled cider, I think. Mulled cider came back, it was fine. Pretzel came. Did a few laps, you know, we saw they tried to bring it to another table, eventually brought it back to us. Of course, we went to eat it, cold. So we just said, look guys, you know, got the pretzel, but it's a bit cold, would you, you know? So right away, our server was like, yeah, yeah, I'll bring you another one. Bring us another one, and it was good. Um, we got all our mains. I ordered some fish tacos. Cody got a uh, poutine, um, Melissa got a poutine, and Nadine got the nachos. Every one of our meals came cold, and it, came out pretty quick so it's not like it was sitting there waiting for a long time at least as far as we knew because it, it got to us fairly fast um and we were right by the kitchen like right i could see the kitchen i could see them making food and everything it was right there but everything came cold um you know so we tried to eat it because it was like you know whatever let's just try and deal with it but then it got to the point where like like this is this is a bit ridiculous because it's not like it's a, a cheap grubby you know nasty place it was just very strange so we said to our server look you know, everything's cold. And um, she said, you know, she offered to bring us back something else. But I you know what, when, when you're at that point, you're just like, I'm done. You know, I've kind of had enough now. I've been disappointed. We just want to kind of continue on with our day and go finish the Christmas market and whatnot. So yeah, I will give her credit though, because she did uh, comp our whole meal, which she really didn't have to do, but that was you know really nice for her. Um, we were sure to, obviously we still paid for our drinks and we were sure to tip on what the cost of the meal would have been because, you know, it wasn't her fault that the food came out that way. Cause even she was like, it doesn't make sense. I mean, she touched the cheese curds on Cody's poutine and they were ice cold. It just didn't make sense. Um, I don't know if other people had the same problem or what, but yeah, it was just a really, an off day, I guess, for, for Mill Street. Um, I'd like to think anyway, because like I said, the place is normally pretty good. Maybe it's too busy. I don't know. Anyway, um, one thing I really like about the Christmas market is that they have these sort of area set up where you can get warm sort of festive drinks there's mulled wine they have uh you know warm drinks with like like hot toddies and like that with whiskey with uh i even had a hot chocolate with tequila in it and i know that sounds like a really gross combination but it was delicious it was so so good so um usually the usual case is that you'd be able to get your drink and you'd be able to walk around the whole market um you know be respectful if stores don't want you to bring food or drink inside then don't bring it inside but otherwise you used to be able to walk around the entire distillery district with it um, for some reason, they, I, I noticed this last year as well, they kept you in these designated areas with heaters and, and fire pits and things like that, and you weren't allowed to leave these designated areas with your drink, especially they knew if it was an alcoholic one because there was a sticker on it. So you, if you tried to walk out with it, you know, you weren't allowed to. You weren't allowed to walk around the market with it. I don't really understand this, why the change? Um, you know, I, again, you start to think last year, was it a COVID pandemic related reason but even still it doesn't really make sense because you have a bunch of people gathered in a small area with their masks off so that was last year this year obviously you know not so many people wearing masks um and then even the heater situation the heaters the fireplaces there weren't enough of them so unless you were right next to one like it was cold it went on a very very cold windy day so i mean it was our own fault but yeah the way it was set up i don't know i didn't really like it i i miss the days when you could just sort of walk around with your your drinks because I, I don't really understand why they changed this even, you know, like what do they think is going to happen? Like if 
you're am I gonna drink mulled wine and get really rowdy walking around the market because I could do that anyway I could just try and get in that little designated area and then go be rowdy as I walk around I, I don't know it, it just it doesn't make sense to me why they made that change but they did and I guess take it or leave it I know I said in the beginning I didn't have too much to add and I guess that's sort of went out the window <laughs> But all in all, we still had a great day. Um, we had a great day, the company was good, you know, so I'll, you know that, that always helps as well. But we just had a great day. Um, I love the, I'm still gonna call it the Christmas market because that's just sort of what I'm used to referring to it as, um, the winter village. Um, I do love it. I think it's a great Christmassy holiday event to go to. It's sort of an annual tradition for me. I've been going for, oh, geez, I don't even know how many years, at least seven years now, I would say. Minus 20, 20, obviously. And it's just one of those events that I just really, really enjoy going to. I look forward to it every year. I, I love the distillery district. It's a really cool place, very historic. You know, I enjoy the the architecture. You know, you got the cobblestone sort of floors and everything. Um, yeah, I just really enjoy it. I think it's just, it gets you sort of in that Christmas spirit, in that Christmas mood. And that's, uh, yeah, I think it's, it's great. A couple recommendations, go before four o'clock. Make sure you go before four o'clock. If you don't, then you know maybe try and buy your ticket in advance just to make sure it actually does go through before you get there just because it is gonna be a bit of a you know what show. So that would be uh, one recommendation. Another recommendation would be to go early anyway. Go earlier in the season too. I always recommend this with my videos. Whenever it's sort of like a seasonal event, like you know, even with some of my Halloween videos, you may have remembered me mentioning, you know, Halloween home, things like that. Go earlier <coughs> in the season. The closer you get to whatever holiday it is, I find the busier it gets. So for example, with this particular event, it runs until New Year's Eve. So I find the closer you get to Christmas, it's gonna get really, really, really busy. Um, maybe after Christmas, it might sort of calm down a little bit, but it's probably still gonna be pretty busy because you know kids are off school, people are off work, things like that. So it probably still would be quite busy. So going earlier in the season probably will help you not to sort of hit those crowds so much. But I mean, even us, we went on the Saturday, the first Saturday was open and it was busy. Granted opening weekend, maybe that was one reason why, but yeah, it was busy. Another word of advice, dress weather appropriate. <laughs> check the weather, check the weather, check the weather. It was so cold for us. Um, you know, I, I was wearing a winter jacket. I had a earmuff scarf. Um, I was still really cold because I didn't have gloves on because I'm an idiot. Um, so I was cold, uh, it, was, it was quite cold and it was really windy. And when you get down certain sort of pathways, it's just like a wind tunnel. So you're gonna get, you're gonna feel that chill. You can go inside, there's lots of restaurants and stores and things like that that you can go into if you need to warm up, um, you know, get yourself a warm drink or something like that. So there are some options like that to kind of help combat that <laughs> coldness. But uh, yeah, if you have a sort of an op fairly open schedule, keep an eye on the weather as well and try and go on a better day because even last year we went and it snowed like crazy it was miserable and I mean it's gonna impact your sort of overall time and experience if the weather's not cooperating now is this spot right for you to me this event has something for a bit of everybody really you've got some stores there especially some unique stores there um, I think one of them's called Burgo I believe I've gotten some great stuff from there for my place um, so yeah, you have a bit of shopping for people who are trying to do some shopping, get some different gifts for people. You've got lots of different restaurants and dining options and, and places to get a snack even. So if you're you know a foodie, you're looking for something to eat, you've got some great options there. You like sampling the drinks, you've got some great options. Um, you're looking for sort of a nice day out or even a nice night out. It's, uh, you sort of got those, both of those covered. Um, it's family friendly, so you can take your kids, uh, you can go on a date, you can take go with your friends, you can go with, with, with sort of whoever. Did I see anything that screamed, um, you know, this is Christmas and nobody only, you know, you can only go if you celebrate Christmas. Not at all. This event is truly for everybody, even though everybody still refers to it as the Christmas market. I don't think that there's anything there that would make anybody feel less comfortable or welcome being there if they don't celebrate Christmas. It's still just a nice day out. I mean, the decorations there uh, were beautiful. Um, the Dior Christmas tree was phenomenal. And so uh, Christian Dior is the, the sponsor this year. And normally I'm not crazy about having a huge big corporate sponsor at, at a you know event like this, but it was done tastefully. And I mean, j'adore Dior, so I was totally fine with it. 
But anyway, let me know in the comments, have you been to the Winter Village slash Toronto Christmas Market? Have you noticed a difference between the last, you know, this year and last year versus previous years in the sense of like why they would do this whole name change? Uh, I don't know. Anyway, let me know in the comments what you think. Um, if I've left anything out or you have any further questions or something that maybe you can't find online or maybe just a tip that you want to, you know, ask me before you go, feel free to leave in the comments. I really do always try my best to respond to every comment I see. So if you have any questions, concerns, comments, definitely leave them below um and it also helps my channel out because it helps with the algorithm helps sort of spread this video to other people which ultimately helps me out as well so please also consider giving this video a like and sharing it with your friends as well if they're thinking of going to the winter i'm gonna keep stumbling on this the the winter village or toronto christmas market whatever you want to refer to it as if you're thinking of going or have friends or thinking of going then definitely please uh, share this amongst your group i would really really appreciate it if you consider subscribing to this channel as well i really I'm trying to grow the channel. I'm trying to hit a big milestone for me and that would be 5,000 subscribers. So if you could help me out, I would really, really appreciate it. Um, yeah, I would love that. This video, I mean, at the end of the day, this channel really is meant for helping people. Um, I know sometimes I, I come off and make a few you know, negative comments here and there or jokes here and there about certain places. But like I said in my last video, I really am just here to try and help you make informed decisions as to where you're going and where you're going to spend your hard-earned money um if it's worth you going and attending these things that is my ultimate goal here i only try to give advice that i know that i would want to receive as well and i try to sort of cover and think of of everything and you know um hopefully you guys don't think i'm coming across as being negative or, or shady or anything like that so that's never my intention but also let me know if there's any other events that you know of that are coming up that are sort of christmasy or holiday theme that uh, you think it's worth checking out and you know if I if time permits I'll definitely try and check it out between now and Christmas so leave some ideas below and we'll see if I can maybe get to get to them soon once again this has been Daniel Spotlight and we'll see you in the next one bye